So today I'm going to be getting a freestanding dishwasher. Now what do we want? We want a door on this freestanding dishwasher. This worktop's not wide enough to get one just in like this. Now behind there I know there's about 80 mil. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut that plasterboard out all the way down there and then all the way along the top here and then I'm going to be able to slide my new uh, dryer in. Can I say this or should dry? New dryer in. And there'll be plenty of room for it to go back and we'll vent it straight outside. Reason why we're doing that is because the new dryers, integrated dryers, they're a nightmare. And they're a nightmare to get older. Six month waiting list. So uh, we're going to cut that out. And what I'll do is in the side here, I'm going to put some air holes in for ventilation around it. So there's ventilation. It's going to be vented out. I'll seal where, where I've cut out so there's no air pockets to get out. And then we'll slide the dishwasher in, I mean the dryer in, put the hinges on here, put the door on there. It'll have to open that way. But that's, it is what it is. It'll be hidden behind. The door. I get the old hammer, put it in that, and then I'm going to pull this board off. See, see how much room we've got at back of there? That's because there used to be a window there. I pull it off. We've dotted it, put plenty of dots in it all over, so might take some pulling off, but it'll come off. The the uh, hinges, when I put them on, I reversed them so the hinges behind the panel, and I, I did that because I had an idea that we were going to do this. So uh, the, in uh, the hinges are behind the panel, the panel's going to be stood firm. That allow enough room for the, dish uh, for the dryer to go back and have a lot of air circulation around it. So uh, I'll show you, I took it all out. That's going to allow that dryer to push back with plenty of room. We'll vent it straight out of the side there. I'm going to PVA that wall before I put the dryer in. I'm going to let that foam, I foamed it all the way around the gap. Because we don't want no air gaps. So this is, uh, it, it, this is a foam adhesive, this is what it's used for, this is the sole purpose of foam. Um, so once that dries, that will be drying about 30 minutes, half an hour, and we'll just cut it off neatly, then it's sealed, PVA, seal it, then the freestanding dryer can push back, we'll mark the vent, we'll get it straight through the wall, and it'll be lovely. Plenty of ventilation. Some holes in here, all the way down, all the way across. Plenty of ventilation for that. Behind. So as you can see, it's all cleared out now. Nice big gap. We'll go get drier now. Let that dry. Then see this, you just cut it off. With a sharp, um, I, well I'll use this. But you can use uh, just this, a flat scraper, slide it like that and it'll cut off neatly. As you can see I've just put some holes in there for ventilation because this side, it's going to be a panel going on there and at least there'll be some circulation going round. You always got to think about ventilation and, and air. Products which are integrated, they, they still need air. Same with fridges, with everything. So we pick the dryer up, this is a dryer. See what I mean about space? Now once the floor goes on that dryer, if you don't put these units high enough, won't have gone in. So you should always make sure that you've got enough space underneath here. So we've got it to fit, goes back nicely. I'm gonna pull it out now. I'm going to get the centre of the vent, then I'm going to core a hole through the wall. That's why I use a foam. It's foam adhesive. See how it's nice, tidy, all the way around. All I've done is gone and got the dryer, come back, cut it straight. Beautiful. Now it can go in. That's the outlet for the dryer. So we just measure there. Center, measure there, center, measure the back point. 
there. Centre, centre. Caught it all out. Job's a good one. And there you can see I've caught it out. When you're calling holes, you always need a decent core bit. And see that? Puts a lovely hole through it. On the outside, it'll be lovely, it won't be smashed. Now our vent is going to go straight through there. Bish bash bosh, job's a good one. Lovely. Cleaned it all off, all nice and clean. Go straight through that hole. Like you're integrated and you're struggling here to get in to do the legs. Because you want to make sure that they're always level in every direction. So what I do is, I start with this leg. So I move that leg higher than all the rest of them because I can get to the front, I can get to the front. I've drilled an hole in the side there because I can get, get into that panel there. So I can get into that panel to do the back leg there. So when I push that unit in, it's going to be on like a little pivot. So I'll get to that leg, I'll get to the front leg, I'll get to that leg. That leg I won't have to touch. So that leg is already fixed. So that reason, when it goes in, that's the only leg you can't get to. So if it's lower than everything else, you're going to have to pull it out and jack it down. If you jack it higher than everything else before you put it in, you only have to jack that, jack that and jack that. Just a handy little tip. We got the other drive because but in the shop, what we did, we pushed this back to the wall and then we pushed the Uber one back to the wall and they both were in line with each other. So what we did is we thought that they both were the same size, me and the shopkeeper. But what none of us did do is actually measure it. So I brought the Uber, trying to get it in, to be, I thought, I can't understand this. So that is a schoolboy error. I should have double checked it because then I've rung them up to <coughs> what's going on here? Have you given me the wrong Uber? Should only be 550 deep. That, uh, uh, he says, no, no, that's right. He says, well, we both tested it in shop. So the moral of the story is, always check. It's cost me half a day now. Because if I had to take the other one back, then we've had to get this in. Because this, one, this is the size what we need to get it in and get a door on it. So, uh, always check. Do you know what I mean? I'm kicking myself. Absolute kicking myself. If you could see foam coming out of my ears, you'd see it. That's how annoyed I am. Always double check. So, uh, what I'm doing here now with this is I've cut my panel. You need a panel on there first, and then you hinge. So, uh, I've done that the exact same size as a unit. Then what I'm going to do, once I screw this in, I'm going to screw this in, into that panel, through the inch, then I've, I've drilled some centre holes for the inch, the inch is going to get screwed on, then before I drill that other door, I'm going to clip this door off and clip it on there to make sure it works before I touch the door. And then if it works, then I'll measure the inch for the door and I'll just drill it exact same as a unit. So uh, I'll show you in one minute. Screw this I've screwed the hinges on and then I've screwed this panel to there. Then before I drill any doors, I'm going to test it with a 600 unit. I'm going to put that on there. about then see if it works so that's it beautiful it's beautiful so we know that's gonna work it slightly wants to come out of Soft close hinge. So now we know that door's bang level. That's level. Now all we have to do is put the hinges on for the washing machine and just make that level. So it all runs in line. Now I'll get the doors out and drill them. To get them off, just use your uh, clip them off like that. Back on. 
there we go. Too much stuff in that cupboard. That's it. Integrated dishwasher, uh, washing machine door can be a bit tricky. So take your time with it. Put them in, always put them in the centre. So you've got time to move it up and down if you need to. And then just build these up. They just go on there like that. In there, screw up. Same with the engines, just screws up like that. That one goes down. Depending on which washing machine it is, you might have a different jig, so you can't. This is just an example. Then what we've got is we've got two plates. They'll do the magnet door. Two plates. That's for the magnet door. So you get in, John, and now I always set this up on this. So get your jig out, look at it, see what it's saying. It's not saying the right lot, do you know what I mean? But, never mind. So it goes to the top of your dishwasher door, uh, top of your washing machine door there. I keep calling it dishwasher. Then you know your engine's going to hit. So what I do, I get my square. All I do is line me square up by eye, off the top of the washing machine. And then I know I've got a nice gap which is equal to the rest of them for my door. So now all I need to do is put this on the edge of my door, pencil mark, and then what I do, I just pull that jig on, drill it. Easy as that. Round to your door, make sure you've got your arrow right. All you do is transfer in this, this is universal, so it could be left or right. We're going left, so the, when you're looking at, at your door, you need to make sure that you get the right side inch, otherwise, <whistles> jolly no. So you get your square, the square which I've marked, it hasn't moved. Get it on there, just draw a line up, straight, straight away across. Like that, you. Then, all I do is get the jig on. Make sure it's tight, pull it tight, pull it tight again, and then I just colour that circle in. Colour it in, don't matter if you go over the paperwork, it don't matter. Colour it in. Then pull that down, pull it tight, make sure it's tight, otherwise it won't match. Again, just draw around that circle. You can tape it on. Then what I do is get the other side, make sure I haven't moved there, pull it tight, mark your little holes, pull it tight again, running your finger down the door, pull it tight. These are for their little silver brackets. And there we have it. We have got the size of the door. Now before I do the door, I'm going to get my tape measure. Ooh, yeah. I'm going to get my tape measure. And then measure to the centre of the hole. I put a mark on my tape measure. And all I do is go over to the door. Put it there. Centre. Center, so you know where you're drilling. Yeah, that inch, you've got a little bit of play to move it down, move it up. So we know when I drill this door, it's going to be bang on.